Over the next four or so Wednesdays, I plan to talk about spirituality. I hope you'll stay with me. Five-minute recordings are not enough to scratch the surface of Christian history and practice. Perhaps I can teach a class or a Zoom later. I want you to stick with me because Christian spiritual practice is as old as the Bible and has always been closely linked with prayer, study, and action. Christian spirituality and action go together. I, I don't believe that the two can be separated, Christian spirituality and action, prayer. We live in a crazy and difficult time. There's unchecked plague in our land, a longing for social justice, and a great opportunity for evangelism. You probably want me to talk about those subjects, and, and I'll get there. But at first, I want to lay some groundwork. So what is spirituality? I like Bradley Holt's definition in his book on the history of Christian spirituality. Spirituality is a capacity, a style, and an academic discipline. A capacity that all people have. For example, when people say, I've discovered my spirituality, they mean they've discovered dimensions about themselves or about being human that makes it possible to integrate spiritual meanings with spirit, physical uh, activities or to integrate intellectual work with ethical action. Human beings relate to the unseen world and call this spirituality. We grow in our relationship with Jesus. We find we have a deeper capacity to love God and, and to love neighbors. We're spiritual. Spirituality is also a way of relating to God and the world. We can talk of ancient spirituality or Calvin's spirituality or postmodern or Presbyterian or liturgical spirituality. Holt also writes about spiritual formation, developing and shaping this important aspect of practicing Christianity. Style, deepening that capacity for love. There's also an academic field of studying, the first two and teaching spiritual formation and spiritual growth. All Christians, Roman Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox, have been doing spirituality since the time of Jesus. We just didn't use that word until recently. Protestants started teaching spirituality in the 1960s. It's come even more recently to us in the Presbyterian Church. Columbia Seminary in Atlanta has had a spirituality program since the 1980s. Ben Campbell Johnson, the professor of evangelism, began it, and other Presbyterians have directed the program since. I, I told you, it all goes together. Stick with me. I've taken classes at Columbia and from Roman Catholic ecumenical teachers. I've prayed with monks in abbeys and monasteries, and I hope to share some of that with you in the coming weeks. The word spirit is close to the word wind in the Bible. Remember that the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters in the creation story. It could be translated that a wind from God swept across the chaos. In both Hebrew and Greek, the word for wind, spirit, breath, and life is usually the same word or synonyms of one another. People are spiritual beings with the breath of God in us, and, and that's been clear since our creation. We seek connections and meaning. We seek community and the divine. Think about all the Psalms that talk about being still and knowing God. Psalms and prayers in the Bible that seem to reach beyond words. 
Jesus, Jesus often went to a place apart from the disciples to pray. I'm actually going to divert from my written script, my essay at this point. I came up here to the sanctuary to record, and I saw the three stained glass windows at First Presbyterian that are beside the sanctuary. And they, in the middle, Jesus is praying alone and, and praying and struggling with the call from God, uh, with his letting the cup pass from him. And Jesus blesses the children. And he calls them to be with them, to pray with them. And uh, in the third, the closest to the pulpit, is the story in the book of Acts when Jesus walked with the disciples and they did not know him until he, he broke the bread and their eyes were opened. Uh, all of those are examples of biblical spirituality that are a part of our church. Now I'm coming back to my script and maybe you can hear that the air conditioner has kicked on and the sound has changed. As the church expanded and took the gospel to the ends of the earth, Christian spirituality expanded too. With the fall of Rome and its power in the West, the church shifted east to Constantinople and Asia and into the desert and Christian monasteries, places of prayer and formation. St. Benedict wrote a book about the monastic life called The Rule of St. Benedict, which we will pick up next week. In conclusion, we're spiritual beings who seek meaning and connection, community with others and with God. Jesus taught us to love passionately, to love our neighbors as ourselves. We practice spirituality, whether we use that uh, word or not, to be spiritual and to be in spirituality and spiritual formation is very Presbyterian.